Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to CG Hacks. I'm Ryan Sims and today we're gonna be playing with fire. <laughs> we're gonna be using fire today in your Photoshop composites to help you bring a little bit more heat to your images. See you in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I've got this really fun image of Batman pulled up and we are gonna set Gotham on fire. Let's go ahead and take a look at our fire stock pack. I wanna head over to Adobe Bridge. So as you can see, we've got two different versions here. We have a version that's on a black background, and then we've got a transparent version that's already saved out as PNGs. The other difference that we have is the fact that the black background can be used with the Puppet Warp tool, whereas the transparent version cannot be used with the Puppet Warp tool. Now, I won't just mention that. I will show you exactly what I mean here in just a moment. But let's go ahead and go through. Let's start looking at the transparent version first. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of different categories. We've got bonfire, burst, embers, grungy, patches, pillars, towards the camera, trails, and window. And so we'll probably go through and show a couple of different examples of each one of these, but we may not end up using each one in the final composite. We're really just gonna kind of set up the scene and see what works best for this Batman shot. So as I'm looking at this image, I'm already starting to see a couple of different categories that I could use for this image. Say for example, right here where Batman is standing, we could probably go in and use some of the trails. We have some that we could either slant or we actually have some that already have like a slant to it. Maybe rotate that, but we could use something like that along the edge here. We've got some areas maybe for the pillars that we could use, say like right here. We've even got windows that are either straight on or again, kind of slanted at an angle that maybe we could use in some of these window areas. Let's just start kind of setting up our scene and playing around and having fun with it. I'm gonna find this edge right here, which I have it labeled edge right there. And so I am either gonna put it below this layer or above this layer, but let's go ahead and go back into bridge and look at trails and just kind of see what we think will work for that section. Now I could probably spend a long time searching for the right image. So I'm going to try my best not to spend forever doing this. So I could drag this image right here into Photoshop. And if I wanted to make it go along those lines right there, what I could do is just drag it down and perhaps hold down my uh, control and shift key as I manipulate this edge here and kind of contort it to where it would fit along the edge. Now I could do something like that or let me hit enter. If I wanted, I could go back into bridge and choose a version that's already kind of got a little bit of a slant to it already. Like say maybe this one right here. So let's drag that one in. And sometimes I like to do that. I like to kind of compare and contrast the different versions and see which one I like better. So we've got this one like this. So I would just rotate it. So I'll go up to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Now it's not quite at the angle that I need. So I could do one of two things. I could either rotate this fire like so, or I could transform it like I did the previous image. I think I may just rotate it like that and keep it right about there. Something like that. I may zoom out just a little bit and enlarge it so I can just kind of see what I'm doing and then hit enter. And so I've got an image kind of like this and then I've got one like this and just kind of figure, do I want more subtle? Do I want a little bit more big flames? Kind of like the big flames. Of course, I also like the subtle. So at that point, you just kind of have to make up your mind, which one do you like? I do feel like the flame should probably be facing the opposite direction. So I may go back up to edit, transform, flip horizontal, and then hit control T to transform this image. And then I may just hold the control button down and just kind of bring that angle down just a little bit. Maybe bring this up some, and that way I can maybe manipulate the image a little bit because I'm paying attention to the direction the cape is flowing. So if the wind is blowing in this direction, to me, it makes sense that the fire would also be moving in that same direction as well. And maybe just leave something like that. I think that's pretty simple. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this other one and let's continue on. Let's go over back to bridge. 
I'm going to go over to window real quick and see if I can maybe fill this area right here. Now there is like a circular type of window there. I'm just going <laughs> to bypass that and pretend that this giant square here is what I'm wanting to fill. Like that's just a big window. And let's see. Let's go through here. I think this has a little bit too much of an angle to it. And so I'm going to kind of look through these images and see what I think would work best for that area. We're probably going to have to do a little bit of manipulation with transforming the size and perspective of it, which is okay. We'll just go with this one right here because it's straight on. I'm going to drag that into Photoshop, bring it right up here, resize it just a little bit, and kind of angle, maybe start at this bottom left corner here. Let me zoom in so I can see what I'm doing and kind of bring that right about to that bottom edge there and what I could do is to keep it centered there I could just move this anchor point and drag it right there and that way if I hold my control key down and just kind of shift this angle here I can kind of line up the perspective a little bit more easily with this area and then once I kind of have the angle the way I want it I'll just hit enter and this is just to kind of show you the different ways that you can use these images. Not everything is going to be absolutely perfect for this shot, but it's just to kind of give you an idea. I may actually use that one instead because I like the direction that the fire is flowing. I am going to have to mess with the perspective. So let me delete that other one. Zoom in real close. Control T to transform. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to hold down Control Shift Alt all three together and grab right here and just kind of shift this over just a little bit that way my anchor point stays right there in the center and i can kind of manipulate these edges here and then i'm just going to resize something kind of like that there let's go back into bridge and see how we can continue to flesh this out let's go over to pillars and let's select some of the burning pillars here we might go over to say this one here grab that drag it in and let's resize it just a little bit and find some areas of which we could put that we could put it right here against the uh the pillar kind of resize that just a little bit we could do the same thing on the other side maybe grab another one maybe something like that drag it in resize that image real quick real easy just kind of drag and drop it in and i may flip it the opposite direction that way it's flowing in the same direction as the wind so go to edit transform flip horizontal Control t to bring up our transform options and just kind of flip that around like that and hit enter very good so it looks like we've got like a nice you know blown out window here and let's see let's go back in now because of the perspective that i have i may not be using anything in patches uh, i do like grungy i think that's really got some nice detail to it i might use one of those in a second but i know we're going to use some fire embers so let's check out some of the fire embers i want them to show up so i might use some of these bigger chunkier ones and maybe also a, a thin layer as well so let's go in and just look at some of these for a moment I might grab this one let's grab this one i'm going to drag it in and I want it to be in front of Batman. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and take that layer, drag it in front. There we go. And then Control T to resize. I may go ahead and go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal again. So it's kind of got this same 45 degree angle going in this direction like the wind is. And I may just kind of bring it a little bit lower. Maybe enlarge it just a little bit. Coming from the building itself, it seems like. Or better yet, I may even take this layer and drag it even in front of that edge. That way, it seems a little bit more like they're in the foreground of the image. And then to add a little bit of depth to the image, I may go behind Batman right here and grab another ember pack. Like say, we'll go with this one right here. Let's drag this one in. And we'll drop it in behind Batman and we'll actually flip it horizontally. Again, just standing consistency with the rest of the image something like that there and that way you have some in the foreground and in the background and i may resize it just a little bit more so it's not right there against his face very good let's continue to flesh this out let's go might use one grungy and one bonfire let's use bonfire first we'll go with we'll just say this one let's take that drag it in 
kind of resize it up just a little bit. Maybe bring it right over in this direction. Really give a lot more heat over here to kind of match that highlight. So something like that that kind of gives the illusion like there's a large light source coming from that direction. And then maybe the same thing with grungy. We might just select one over here. Just grab this one. <laughs> Let's grab it. Go inside, drag and drop. And we can bring it a little bit lower, maybe just to have a little bit over on this side. And I may take that image and actually bring it a little bit lower because I have some issues with the cape there. I want it to be behind the cape. There we go. Like he's in the midst of the fire. And I may even copy that one by hitting Control J. And since the right side is getting cut off, I might bring it over to the left side and do something with it over there. So I'll drag it right up here. Control T, drag it all the way up to the top. And maybe just have a little bit of extra fire up here at the top like it's coming from these upper buildings maybe resize it down just a tiny bit something like that there so all kinds of fun things that we can try with this image let me go back in i might do one more i may actually grab a couple of more embers honestly i may take one from down here drag it in drag it over there and i may just flip it by doing this right here dragging it on the opposite side and then resizing it that way it seems like we maybe have a little bit more in the foreground here and i think i may take this one little piece of fire right here and select it Control t maybe transform it just a little bit just to kind of stretch it out slightly just to give it a little bit extra fill for that area right there and that's just a super quick way that we can use these uh, fire images here since I have so many of these fire stock layers here what I could do is I could actually select them all so I'll just start at the top hold the shift key down click the bottom one that way it selects them all hit Control G to group them and I can just name that fire and you can see that the default blending mode is passed through and you can leave it right there or if you want, you can actually change it to screen mode and it will actually change it to screen mode and use these in screen mode as well. Just makes it a little bit more transparent. You can see there's not a huge difference between the two. Just when it's in that normal or pass through mode, you got a little bit more color. Whereas uh, when you change it to screen mode, it's a little bit brighter. So I may try the same thing with the uh, fire stock images that are above the Batman layer so let's go ahead and take those select them all hit Control G to group them I'll rename that as fire as well and again just kind of showing you pass through versus screen and the differences of how that looks that's on screen if you look right in this area before on screen back to pass through so you get a little bit more detail in its normal mode if you go to screen it's just a little bit brighter and you lose some of that detail but it does seem like it's a little bit hotter if that's the word you want to use totally your preference there now i did mention before that you can't use the pngs or the transparent fire stock images with the puppet warp tool so let me show you what that means really quick i'm going to turn these layers off temporarily just so you can kind of see what i'm doing here so if i were to go into bridge and we'll just use bonfire since it's pretty visible and i drag this one in and i'll just put it right there on top just for a moment and say for example if i wanted to manipulate this piece of fire with the puppet warp tool i'd go up to edit puppet warp and then i would set my anchor point so let's just say we set one at the top and at the bottom and i wanted to just move that around a little bit you can see that it makes this really weird outer edge lining here that doesn't look very appealing to the eye we kind of lose its realness and believability and so we don't want to do that however we could do that with the uh the black background so let me control z undo that you see that's the before it's a lot smoother of a glow whereas afterwards when we start messing with it you get that hard line we don't want that so let me delete and show you the same thing with the black png background there's no need to really go through all of the same things again because the only difference again with this is if i drag this in it's just going to be on a black background and we would have to change that to the screen blending mode in order to be able to make it seem transparent and to use it like that. However, the benefit 
for using fire like this is that if you wanted to manipulate it by say using the puppet warp tool, go up to edit, puppet warp, and say I want to set an anchor point. Maybe I want to spread this side out and also spread this side out. Then I could do that over this way. Maybe if I wanted to spread this side out over here, I could do that. Maybe bring this middle part down slightly. And you see, we still have that nice faded glow, whereas we don't have the crunchy, weird thing that happened before. There's no situation where I would actually do a fire thing just like this, but that's just to kind of show you how you could use the Puppet Warp tool. So let me just go ahead and delete that out. So let's say if I want to add some fire here in the front, let's go ahead and do that really fast. I'll go right below this edge layer and we'll go into our PNGs. Let's just fill it out with some grunge real quick just because I like these. Let's grab this, we'll throw it in there, kind of move it off to the side, change that blending mode to screen. And let's grab one more. Let's grab this one right here. Let's just grab that one, drag it in. We'll put this behind him as well. And then let's go ahead and put these two in a group. So we'll select them both, hit Control G. I'll rename it as fire with black BG background. And so we can keep it right here on the pass through, or if we wanted to change it, say to linear dodge or add, you just get a little bit of a different effect there. It's just slightly brighter. See, you see this is uh, with linear dodge and this is before pass through after with linear dodge and so it just adds a little bit more of a brightness to it which uh is very nice for fire effects now i mentioned puppet warp before personally i like to use more of just the warp tool so if i were to select this layer right here go up to edit go down to transform and warp then it brings up this little box with all of these other smaller boxes inside of it and then i can just kind of point in the direction that i want the fire to go and then just kind of pull it in that direction using some of these little points and little levers here to stretch it out in the way I want. And so that's another way that you can manipulate your fire. So let's say for some random wacky reason you want to change the color of your fire. Well, you just go over to your fire layer or your fire grouping and you can just go up to hue and saturation, click on that check on this little box right here just to clip it to your grouping or to your layer and from there you can just move this hue slider to the left to the right to the desired color so this could work really well if you're dealing say with a magic character or some type of character that would involve uh, you to change the color of the fire now one thing to consider whenever you're placing all of this fire into your environment is the lighting on your subject. Now, I happen to have already photographed this subject with an orange color gel from behind to give it the appearance that there would be some type of orange light source like fire behind him. However, if you did not do something like that, then you might want to consider actually painting on some of the highlights. This is how I would do that. I would actually select my subject and create a new layer by hitting Control Shift N and you can call it highlights or light painting, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it highlights and I'm going to clip it to that layer and I'm going to leave it on normal at first and then I'll change the blending mode here in a moment. So I'm going to hit okay. And what I would do is I would just zoom in really close, see all the areas that need the highlight, perhaps on the cape, on uh, the head right up here at the top and just enhance some of those highlights and say let's start right here in this little area of the mask so i'll just hit my b hotkey to bring up my brush tool make sure if i right click that my settings are pretty low on the hardness probably i keep it right there at zero give it a nice fade i can increase or decrease the size of my brush there and before i actually start using my brush tool to paint this highlight in, i'm going to hit my i hotkey to bring up my eyedropper tool and I'm probably just gonna sample from some of the surrounding colors, like maybe this orange 
right here. And with my brush, I would just want to go along the edge of Batman here, or at least of all the areas where I think there's going to be a strong highlight, and just kind of gradually paint those in like so. And so I would do that around all the areas I think would require that, probably around the neck, the mask area, alongside the cape, maybe even this outer shoulder. You already kind of see a little bit of a highlight that's already there from the light that I used to photograph, but I would just go along if there's anything in particular that I would need to do and where I would need to do it to add in those little highlights. And I probably wouldn't leave it on normal. I would probably change the blending mode, say to color dodge or something like that. That way you can kind of see a good before and after. It just seems to blend a little bit better. And that will conclude our fire tutorial today in Photoshop. Just to review, we talked a little bit about the different kinds of fire that we have. We have it on the black background versus the transparent. We talked about using the puppet warp tool, using blending modes, working in groups, using the hue adjustment layer to adjust the color of our fire. A couple of best practices, just remember that if you have a subject that maybe has not been lit with color gels to kind of reflect the environment you're gonna be putting them in, just to be able to kind of paint in the environment or to be able to paint on your subject to reflect some of those additional highlights that they may need to make it look a little bit more realistic. So check out CG Hacks if you're interested in this stock pack and remember until next time, create more, say less, stay creative.